road win, 67-56. Your final, the Gators improve to two and two in the SEC. Tennessee and Vanderbilt's coming up next. We send you now to Tom Hart and Dane Bradshaw. You mentioned Key running the point, but the luxury Tennessee has, they have so many guys that can bring up the ball. Here's Plotchitz. Best could be from way deep, and it's an air ball. They've got to spread Tennessee out. They have a lot of shooters, but they can't just settle from three. They don't have a lot of drivers, but they've got to try to penetrate and work inside out to get those open threes. Shot clock late again. Vandy's had a couple of really late possessions thanks to the number one defensive team in the country, and it's another shot clock violation. And just as we were discussing, Vanderbilt operated that entire possession from 30 feet out. They don't have a lot of guys that can blow by you, and Tennessee has such great one-on-one -on -one defenders that it makes it really tough to penetrate. He has to go in and out, and then there's a foul on the rebound. And a good job by Studi there, holding his ground against the bigger Opponent and Olivier Kamwa picking up a foul on the talented big man. Tom Hart alongside Dane Bradshaw and Alyssa Lang. We welcome you to Thompson Bowling Arena. We're going to see the nation's number one defensive team by efficiency and number two by points allowed. It's trying to find its offensive flow against a Vanderbilt team that is trying to snap a 10 game head to head losing streak. And another challenge at the rim. Santiago Vescovi comes out of there with it. Well, even when you can penetrate that Tennessee defense, you've got the rim protection down low for the balls you have to worry about. Slow start for both teams. They combined one for nine from the floor. Tennessee one for four. And a Julian Phillips drive in their first possession. Vescovy splashes down a three. It's a 5 nothing Tennessee lead. Their last SEC home game, they raced out to a 16 nothing lead against Mississippi State. Never looked back at one of their two blowouts in their last two games. They've been pitching early shutouts. And you're seeing it right now, an empty possession for Vanderbilt on that one with the illegal screen. But Maloria Brown charged with the foul. Both teams going to go to their bench. Ezra Magnon is going to enter for Vanderbilt. Sakai so Ziegler now on the floor along with Toby Owaka for Tennessee. Jonas Adu. Rick Barnes has plenty of depth. Jerry Stackhouse uses his depth in a similar way because now we see the seven-foot shot blocker Liam Robbins on the floor for the first time. Now the early depth for Tennessee, I think, more disciplinary than anything as Rick Barnes was not happy with the crispness on the offensive end, so he goes to his bench. They do against Robbins. Interesting matchup. Liam Robbins, one of the best shot blockers in the country. Ziegler gets doubled on his baseline drive, finds Adu, goes right over the top of the seven foot. And a great job by Adu just making himself available as Ziegler got himself in a little bit of trouble. See pitching an early shutout. Vandy has missed its first five. It's simply amazing the way this Tennessee team can impose its will on the defensive end. Uh, this is not a team you want to have to work into a big lead and try to come back from, given their defense. Robbins gets a deep touch and draws the foul on Julian Phillips. That's his first. Seven nothing Tennessee with the lead. Back in a moment. 
Yes, they've gotten some in the transfer portal. Yes, they've had some freshmen. But every single guy on the court right now was here a year ago, including your, your upperclassmen leaders, your freshmen that become sophomores. And I think that's a huge part of Rick Barnes' success. Where you look across the country and so many teams are dealing with massive turnover and doing all these team bonding things in the offseason try to catch up whereas tennessee's has come naturally through all the years these guys have been together liam robbins knocks down both free throws 75 percent from the line he's a key to this vanderbilt team on both ends of the floor he was scoreless in their last matchup last year tennessee won both of the head-to-head -head matchups and volunteers have won 10 straight in this series. I see Vanderbilt in that press early. They want to try to kill some clock in the shot clock, make Tennessee play their half-court offense with a dwindling shot clock. Beside Jordan James off the bench. Post touch for Adu. Nice little jump hook, and that's the second time he's gone over the top of Vandy's best defender. And that's an option they just simply didn't have consistently a year ago. They settled from deep. They did not have that consistent post threat. They're starting to get that with multiple five men. But Adu, they got Plopchich. They can roll in there. Kamwa can play some five. Miles Studi trying to get deep. Normally a three-point threat. Tried for a two. Robbins cleans up his miss. And I like the jumper by Studi. As you mentioned, he's a three-point shooter, but try to make inside shots, inside rebounds for a guy like Robbins. Ziegler looks to penetrate back out to Josiah Jordan James. He's missed some time with a knee injury. That one was halfway home. Came back a couple of games ago against Mississippi State. Vandy had a great performance on the road against Missouri. Ended up falling 85 to 82 in a back and forth game. They were down 11 in the second half to put together a massive comeback. And Robbins in that game went for 16 and 7 and was perfect from the free throw line. And he'll go back to the line for two on the first from Jonas Adu. Or pardon me, they're going to get Vescovy, according to stats maven Joe McNish. Tom, I had a chance to sit in on the film room with Coach Barnes and his staff and his team. And that's exactly what he didn't want to have happen. He said, if Robbins is going to sit there and take dribble after ri dribble, you got to get in there and dig with some help early on. And that was just too late for Vescovy. Barnes with his staff, including Justin Ganey to his right, your left, the new defensive coordinator for this Tennessee team. And they have, not only have they not skipped a beat, they've gotten better. Five early for Robbins, all five for Bandy. They have, pressure? Excuse me, they have no weak link defensively. When they bring in guys, they can hold their own, they can guard their own, and they help each other. A little too much over the top of Adu, who got up a little late. Jordan Wright thought about the three. Back to Magnol. Transfer from UC Davis into Robbins. Off balance. Got his own miss back. And you can see, if you haven't watched Vandy this season, just how valuable Liam Robbins is to the squad. Well, and a good job taking advantage of the switch. Adu and James got switched, so they were guarding the four and the five, not the matchup Tennessee wants down low. Robbins only plays about 22 minutes a game. Foul trouble has been an issue for him. Be as good an indicator of anything for Vandy's success in the sock two. He commits a foul trying to challenge the shot from James. Well, this is Robbins going to work down low. You see the smaller defender James and Adu tries to come help. And Robbins able to really stick with it there. But that all started with the switch. Vanderbilt getting the mismatch. And so Josiah Jordan James at the free throw line. 9 of 10 from the line this season. This guy's been such a steady force for this Tennessee team. I was telling somebody earlier, not only what he does on the court, but off the court. I mean, this is the guy that hosts the recruits, takes him around campus, meets with the recruits' parents. He is literally a coach on the floor, but also a coach on the recruiting trail. And has done so many things for this program. It's like the Dane Bradshaw role. <laughs> I only hosted guys that weren't coming from my position. <laughs> oh, you're a five-star? Yeah. Yeah, you probably want to go somewhere else. And as he led this game 7-0, Vandy fighting back to get into it. Jordan Wright has been on campus for a while now. And he lets this three fly right over the top of Plopchich. 
And I like that. Jordan Wright can really be a mismatch nightmare, especially if you got a big man on him. Bandy's closed within one after trailing by seven early and struggling on the offensive end. This is Tennessee's favorite play. They love to run this baseline screen action. Money. Mayshack almost got his pocket pick. Shot clock's at eight. Ziegler spins it in. Lopchich banks it in, and that is the third bucket that Robbins has given up. That's a really strong take by Plossett. She can usually overpower guys, but able to score through seven feet 250. Robbins collects his miss and in. Draws the foul on the push from Plopchic. This is a game that Tennessee won at Vandy last year, but it didn't come out without some chippiness. Both Plopchic and Meskimi picked up technicals in that one. Yeah, really physical play. I joked earlier with Coach Stackhouse, Miles Studi for Vanderbilt likes to talk a little trash. Plopsic, I said, I'm predicting a double technical on those two. He said, I want to take the under. <laughs> so it's a personal game for these two rivals. Robbins has been the offensive producer tonight for Vandy. He's got eight of their 11. Fellow senior Jordan Wright has a little other bucket with that three. Nine already for Liam Robbins. You gotta love the way Vanderbilt bounced back from an early struggle offensively, and here they are getting set up in their press. They'd really like to take more time off the clock than that right there. That's just too easy for Tennessee to get across half court. Robbins takes a seat now as Memorial Brown replaces him. Interesting how Stackhouse uses his rotations in the value per minute of Robbins. Maybe the greatest in the league. The, the issue there is that he's only playing 22 minutes a game. And yeah, they'll play him in spurts, and he goes hard when he's in there. And they give him two different options. Melora Brown, a little bit more speed on the perimeter, more of a screener than a post-up option. They want Robbins to stay fresh because there's a lot of depth on Tennessee's inside. Here's Ziegler. Draws a lot of attention, doesn't he? He dribbles out of traffic really well. Vanderbilt thinks they can double the little guy at times, though. See if the double comes here. Indeed, Memorial Brown way out on it. Somebody's open. It ends up being Plotchich who converts. And they'll say, let's take a look at it. But you thought it was going to be Kamwa the way he made that drive down the lane. Able to keep up with him, man. Boy, it's going to take some true leadership from that coaching staff and inside that locker room to keep your focus on the process and not let the outside noise just completely make for a toxic program right now. It's not just a bad loss visually. It's a bad loss mathematically come Selection Sunday. That, that's a South Carolina team that had a net of 263 coming in. Credit to Michi Johnson who went for 26 points, hit six threes. It's the first Gamecock to go 26, five boards, five assists or more since Sidarius Thornwell in 2017. Great performance by Michi. There's Vescovy going to contest that. He goes from point A to point B. I think they wanted them to look at the kick out, but certainly a foul on Tennessee. That's his second. To, to wrap up that point on South Carolina, I know the story is going to be Coach Calipari and the Wildcats losing, but hats off to Lamont Paris. When you yep. take a beating the way you did against Tennessee and to have your team ready to play on the road at Rupp, job well done there. Noah Shelby got another one coming. Freshman out of McKinney, Texas. Three-point shooting foul. He's from Green Hill School. High school teammate uh, Lee Dort. Their family goes back a long ways. That's a couple of the top recruits on Jerry Stackhouse's roster. Quick double. And a near Tennessee turnover. Come on one ready. Volunteers have gotten hot on the offensive end. They've hit five of their last six. Kamwa's made his last 15. See if he wants to test that run. Gives it up. And Phillips. And one. That is such a veteran play by the freshman Phillips. Kamwa gets stuck in the air. Everybody else on the team is standing except two and white. Check out where two and white comes from. He keeps cutting because he knows he's either going to get that offensive rebound or he's going to get rewarded by his big man. Terrific find by Kamwa, but it doesn't happen without the heads-up play by Phillips. 
Old fashioned three point play for the freshman from Blythewood, South Carolina. What makes Tennessee's half court defense so good? The, the ball pressure, the physicality, and their ability to guard at every single position, and they'll switch if they have to. But I like this matchup for Vanderbilt. I think Jordan Wright, he's a guy that can post your guards or take your bigs off the bounce. He's one of those tweeners that can be effective at either. It's Ten points a game. He's a veteran. Product out of Baton Rouge, Dunham School. Lob. Lob just brings it down and turns it into a three-point chance. Tennessee is so crisp on the offensive end. That time Tyreek Key comes hard off that curl, realizes there's some help uphill, and he says, oh, if you're going to come help uphill, I know my big man's open. Uh, they're just a well-oiled machine right now. And when you got multiple point guards on the court at one time, I mean, Tyreek Key started this game at point guard, and now you move him off the ball, yet you still have that high IQ good passer at the two-guard spot. Back-to-back -back three point plays for Tennessee. Plopchich converts Robbins back in after a two minute ra race, uh, rest. Excuse me. Well, yeah, I think Coach Stackhouse saw enough of the and one paint points that typically don't happen when Robbins is in the game. Vandy had tied it at 15 before the Tennessee 6 0 run. Magnon working on Ziegler. Well done by Ziegler. Mignon wants to get all the way to the basket. You want to force him to pull up for that mid-range. Bob chips deep. That's the first miss that Robbins has forced in one-on-one -one, one -on -one defense tonight. And he'll fire a three. Phillips up high for the rebound. Coach Stackhouse will let Robbins take those, but he's going to start making them on a more consistent basis if he's going to get those open looks. Four for 24 on the season. He'll probably keep giving them open looks. He's got a good stroke, though. It's just he's got to see one or two go in before the defense is going to respect it. Ziegler to key. Stroke. First bucket of the night for transfer out of Indiana State. Former Sycamore has three, and it's the largest lead of the night for Tennessee. He is a natural-born scorer. Hadn't really gotten off yet offensively in this season, but... His best is yet to come offensively. Four minutes without a bucket for Vandy in this 9-0 Tennessee run. Vandy and Song, no. you got to make those if you're Vanderbilt. Rarely does Tennessee gamble that time they got it. I think the pressure of Tennessee, when you do get open, you rush it. Tennessee with the corner three. Jordan Wright with the rebound. And we got a wedgie on the lob, and that'll turn into a jump ball. Last time you saw a wedgie on a lob. <laughs> uh, that's usually me when I tried to dunk in the day. It was that close. <laughs> Almost above the rim. I mean, really a good pass. A really difficult catch, too, going full speed. That would have been a heck of a play and just got a little bit sped up. Don Daly took it to the possession arrow. We'll stay with Vandy. I really like this baseline out of bounds defense by Tennessee. They put Adu on the man taking it out with all that, and then they'll switch some on the perimeter, try to catch a steal. Robin slips, kicks. They get an extra pass for three, and that's good from Noah Shelby. He comes in ready to shoot. Yeah. He doesn't take a warm-up run up and down the court. He feels like he's hot as soon as he steps in the building. Shelby made his first two. Uh, Parkman still had made a two. There's three free throws. He hasn't made a two all season. He's 0 for 1 from two, and he's made 11 buckets from three. Well, you love the confidence he plays with. In that Missouri game, he could, took a couple from Steph Curry range where Coach Stackhouse said, hey, Toe the line a little bit more, all right? You don't have to shoot them from that deep. You don't practice them from that deep, but you got the green light otherwise. Tennessee shooting 60% from the floor. They shot 69% against Mississippi State. 
two games ago. That was the fourth best shooting performance in school history. And Josiah Jordan James at the 15 foot. Such a smart Tennessee team. Vanderbilt mixes it up, goes 1 3 1. They say, no problem. We'll get it to our point forward wing slash do whatever. Josiah Jordan James right in the heart of it. Makes his buck. Robbins gets a touch. And he buries it. Boy, that is a tough shot. Just a turnaround contested jumper. It's 11 points in seven minutes for Liam Robbins. Started his career at Drake in Minnesota and now with Vandy. And finally healthy. Ziegler up the curl, the lob. And Robbins picks up the foul. Can't believe it. He thought he went straight up. That'll be his second here in the first half. Hey, Stackhouse, uh, it didn't turn out to be as significant, and we'll see how significant this loss to South Carolina becomes. Jonas Adu at the free throw line, 69% on this season. What a year he's having, huh? Coming off of a 15-point performance on the road against South Carolina. Here's a guy that picked up his playing time late in the season after the Olivier Kamwa ankle injury. And those minutes incredibly valuable in his growth to become what he is now. A five and five guy giving him 20 minutes a night. Sort of a glimpse of what he could become last year against Kentucky. Played really well against Oscar Shibwe and now has just taken another big step forward. Here's Shelby for three. He is feeling it. You mentioned that uh, he doesn't have much of a conscience when he's on the offensive end, huh? Yeah, they set what we call an elevator screen there, and he had his heel over the out-of-bounds line there on the sideline. James answers over the top of the freshman standout lead, Thornton, who's on the floor for the first time since uh, December 30th. And that's 11 assists on 11 made baskets for Tennessee. You will not win that way against the balls if they keep sharing the ball without some denials and make them play some more one-on-one -on -one basketball. Shelby picks it up after a win off key. What can we expect to see from 34 in Lee Dork? Well, here's another three. He's a shot blocker. He's still a little bit raw, and he hadn't gotten a lot of playing time. But right now, he's just got to bring the fight to Tennessee and don't get punked down low, and I think he can do that. He does not have a freshman's build, does he? Not at all. Ziegler had it stripped on his way in. It'll stay with Tennessee with 14 on the shot clock. A little bit better job there by Vanderbilt. But right now, Tennessee's getting ball reversals. They're coming off screens. And I think they just got to jump passing lanes a little bit more if you're Vanderbilt because uh, Tennessee is at their best with the quick passes and less dribbling. And that's exactly what they're getting right now. Here comes a lob for Conwell. Good defense. Started from Oak Ridge. Here's Key. Off the mark. That's the secret city, by the way, in case you didn't know that name. Who gets? That's right. Here's Adu inside. It's rejected. You had a scouting report on Dort. He sends that one the opposite way. Shelby wanted to fire. Studi. He got a piece of it. Shelby again. <laughs> and he's talking to the bench. I love this freshman's confidence. It can get him in trouble at times, but it's got him in Stackhouse's favor now. Kamal missed the layup, gets it back out to James. Took a long trip around. I'm running a play for two if I'm Coach Stackhouse. Maybe he doesn't need a play. Just give him a touch. Hiding in the left corner. Dort with seven on the shot clock. Got Kamwa leaning and is able to finish. And a great feel there. I mean, he absorbed the contact and then spun off of it. Really nice touch. Making the most of his opportunity here. Hadn't played this calendar year. Four-star recruit. The top-rated recruits of the Stackhouse era. Stolen away by Trey Thomas. In his seventh consecutive start tonight. Ziegler is able to move his feet and pick up a foul. Well, that's how you stop the ball in transition, is how Kai Ziegler did there. And that's easier said than done when you got a really good point guard, Thomas, bring the ball up the court here. I thought this might have been a block, but ref saw otherwise. And reward 
Such a terrific defender in Ziegler. 17 foul against Vandy. He's going to be shooting next time. Ziegler rolls it in. His first bucket. And if Vanderbilt's going to be in that drop coverage right there a little bit, that's going to be open as long as you run your man into the screen. Good read. Vandy's picked it up on the offensive end. Doors have made five of their last seven. Half of their makes have been from deep. Shelby has three of those. Shelby guarded by Key. Can't get it to him. Ziegler interrupts. That was a heave, and I think... I think when Colin Smith looked up, he saw seven on the shot clock and thought it was a one. Adu for three. Tennessee with an offensive rebound, one of the best in the country. In fact, they're second in the country in second chance points. And I think why they get that, Tom, is because they take shots within their offense. Everybody's in position. Thomas Edge Studi took it himself. Oh, there's the freshman Dort, who now has a career high with his second bucket, making an impact tonight in his first ever SEC game. How about that? Trail on the play and watch out on your dome. Ziegler dishes and finishes. Oh, man, you talk about getting up high above the rim. Adu's playing with supreme confidence right now. Vandy had tied it at 15. Tennessee went on an 8 nothing run. Vandy pulled within three. Volunteers threatening to keep him at bay. Quick hands by James. There'll be 11 seconds left on the shot clock. His side out of bounds when we return. How about the impact above the rim? The freshman Lee Dort. Well, two big guys here. Vandy has seen kind of a coming out party for Lee Dort tonight with Liam Robbins on the bench with two early fouls. Jerry Stackhouse is uh, not a believer in two-foul participation, just 11% of the season. That has him 277th among division one coaches. You pick up your second foul in the first, more often than not, you're going to go sit. And Dort has taken advantage. Shoot. Another late possession and then balance lost by Miles Studi. And the result is a foul on one and one coming on the other end. Vandy as a team day, 254th in tempo. So they're going to use some clock, but it makes it even that much more difficult when you're going against the number one defensive efficiency team in the country. It is, and they run a lot of sets, and they run a lot of screens, dribble handoffs, and the way Tennessee is so aggressive, they blow those things up. So it makes it really difficult for Vanderbilt to get an opening off of those screens. Although that time, I thought Mignon settled a little bit. He could have kicked it back to Studi to shoot over the smaller defenders equally. Speaking of the stuff that they run, Rick Barnes was just raving about Jerry Stackhouse as a coach today. The, the sets that they run on the offensive end, NBA-level quality. Yeah, especially after timeouts, they're terrific. Late-game stuff, they're great. And this is a team that went on the road to Missouri and had chances to win that game, missed some open looks, some free throws, and that's against the Missouri Tigers. Sold-out stadium, one of the hottest teams in the country, and the Commodores are right there. So my Meshack commits a foul, his first. The lob the Dort, and Meshack tried to hammer it away. Good pass by the freshman, and he follows up the miss. Well, Meshack tried to be everywhere on that play. He tried to get the steal, then he recovered. Oh, a hammer the other way! Julian Phillips cocked it all the way back. That's when you shut down the hoop in the pickup game. It's over. Get your bags, your keys. Everybody go home. Late night tip. Here on Rocky Top, that woke some folks up. Magnon with the lob, and he just threw it in. Ezra Magnon started his career at UC Davis. He had 24 in the South Carolina game to open conference play right around Christmas. Tennessee scored the ball, but they've forgotten what has made them a top 10 team in the country. It's their defense. Vanderbilt scoring way more than the average opponent, especially recently in SEC play. Put up 34 points already here in this first half. Tennessee's only allowed. 52 and a half points per game on average. Mayshack to go. Miss. No reason this game is being played above the rim. We only have five dunks here in the first 19 minutes. Ziegler on Magnol. Shot clock at four. Ziegler heaves it. 
and puts up an air ball under a minute to play. Terry Stackhouse with the play call from the Vandy bench. Lawrence looking for a screen. Gordon, the freshman, Little League, getting over there. Studi step back. Three ball good. And we've got a tie game with 29 seconds left in the half. First three of the night for Miles Studi, their best shooter. I love that decision by Studi. He's basically a points a game off turnovers. Only four in the first half. His lack of turnovers has allowed Vandy to put 37 on the board despite shooting 40%. Shot clock off. Ziegler has it, guarded by Magnon. That's just a late clock situation. We asked Coach Barnes today, if you don't really have a guy that just breaks the defense down one-on-one, -on -one, what do you call late clock? He goes, well, we can run some plays that have multiple options, and you see a lot of offensive threats on the court right now. I certainly love to have the ball in Ziegler's hands. Now at eight, he'll go. Open up door, gets it inside. Kamala has it stripped. Four seconds on the clock. Vandy has a chance to take its first lead with one. The layoff is good. Does it count? They say yes. And they'll check it. If it stands, it's the first lead of the game for Vanderbilt. Coming on an end-to-end -end run. Embarrassing play he's seen in his entire time here as the head coach at Tennessee. He said, give Vanderbilt credit, but we're giving them too many points and too many opportunities by playing outside of ourselves and being sloppy on the boards. He really lit his team up, guys. Five steals for Vanderbilt, none for Tennessee, and 13 second chance points for Vandy. None for Tennessee. A Jordan Wright buzzer beater going coast to coast gave Vandy its first lead of the game. Tennessee with possession to start the second half. And a turnover right off the bat. And Rick Barnes and his staff just put their head in their hands as soon as that occurred. Frustrated, but the offense really isn't what had them trailing at halftime. It was on this end of the court that they must fix. Try to get a look inside, but it's knocked away by Kamwa. The first steal of the game. He left it short and followed his own miss. That's such a big stat for Vanderbilt and against Tennessee. Tennessee, fourth best in the country, according to Ken Palm, at those live ball turnovers with the steals. Dave hey, Robbins starting the second half. They go inside to right again. Back out to the seventh footer. In and out. He's now 0 for 2 from deep. See, I like Wright bringing Kamwa out on the perimeter more instead of banging with the big man down low. That's not where he has the advantage. Wright's been shooting the ball awfully well from deep the last couple of games. Phillips got traffic. If that's on Robbins, it's his third. Trying to cut down the lane. Instead, it'll go on Jordan Wright, and that's a second on Wright. The Robbins second was a borderline call that cost him some minutes in the first half. The activity and movement on that play by Julian Phillips. He makes you work, as do all these Tennessee players. He came off one curl screen. They didn't get it to him, so he came off another one. You have to continue to keep moving and staying attached if you're Vanderbilt. Julian Phillips knocks the first down. All tournament team in Atlantis. Tennessee won that. Really shut down Kansas in the championship game. Phillips two for two. This is a Tennessee team that has won eight games already by 30 points or more. And they've got their hands full with a Vanderbilt team that's just eight and seven. Contested layup. Phillips went up to challenge it. Here's Vescovy with a push. Studi is charged with the foul. About 35 feet from the hoop, it's his second. Tennessee got off to a blitzing start, led this game 7-0 before Vandy was able to go on a run and then take the lead late in the first half. Vandy also put together a nice run 17-3 in the second half of the Missouri game. Get back in that one. Another layup short. 
Klopchich with the rebound. That is such a concern for Rick Barnes that they have taped up the top of the square on the backboard during practice, putting red tape at the very top of it. An idea that they got when they went on the road to Arizona. You see multiple layups come up short for the balls tonight. Here's right out front. Ball fake got comma in the air. That's How did I count that? That That's had to be a, yeah. basket interference. That has to be. Jerry Stackhouse, he, he's known to get some technicals. He deserves one to get one here. There are times you where they don't, the have, they don't have to call basket interference. Is shaking. And you're right. It could be a judgment call if you slap the backboard and it didn't affect the shot too much. But to me, man, that, that's that's two points Vanderbilt. Well, let's see if ball don't lie in the end. And in a game that's been tight throughout, one bucket could make a huge difference. I'm Coach Stackhouse. I'm telling Liam Robbins to go hang on the rim next drive. <laughs> this is the court. Phillips got a half step on Scooty, got it to go. I love the aggressiveness Phillips is playing with. He's been a little bit passive at times, but Tennessee is running action for him. Four point Tennessee lead. Diehards getting on their feet here in Thompson Bowling. Vandy looking for its first bucket of the half. Ezra Magnon from the baseline, short. It's a 6-0 Tennessee run, trying to add to it. Phillips feeling confident. Well, with Phillips at the three, he has the size of things. They got to keep getting him the ball down low. That's the key. The best can be the assist. Uh, you just got to be so frustrated with your coach Stackhouse. When you don't get the goaltend call, and then you get five straight points run on you on the other end. Becomes a pretty big swing. All nine points scored this half along to Tennessee. Then Studi with the shove on Vescovy. And it's the second personal on Studi this half. A couple of frustration fouls from Studi that he just made it too easy on the official. He had the slap of the wrist at the, you know, half court mark a couple plays ago. And then that time just a clear push off. Coach Stackhouse talked about how he needed his veterans to be his smartest players, especially on the road. It wasn't the case at Missouri, and right now, Studi's got to be smarter for him in this game. Vescovy gets doubled, steps through, finds Adu. An offensive foul against Tennessee's big. That's his first. We got a timeout on the floor. Tennessee has scored all 24 consecutive games at home. They've won 10 straight games overall against Vanderbilt. But this Vandy team really given Rick Barnes and his squad, fifth-ranked team in the country, all they can ask for. You said when we were here a week ago that you thought the schedule set up in a way, especially with a lot of upsets in college basketball, the Tennessee could be on their way to being the number one ranked team in the country. I do. I think by the time the Big 12 challenge occurs and Texas is here, I, I think that could be on the line just because of the scheduling reasons. And think back a year ago as Auburn won the SEC championship. Now, a lot of it has to do with who you play, when you play them, and where you play them. And I think Tennessee has a pretty favorable conference schedule, not just in January, but all the way through. I get past this pesky Vandy team tonight. Kelly Ziegler left alone for three. Volunteers on a 12-2 run this half. But Vandy has been pesky against ranked Tennessee teams the last 25 matchups. But Vandy was unranked, and Tennessee had a top 25 team. Vandy bucked the trend and won seven of those. Here's Lawrence from the corner. Well, you see that lockdown defense starting to happen for Tennessee now in this second half. They have gotten the message from Rick Barnes. Quick feed into Conway. He gets fouled. And he'll go to the free throw line. That's the third on Jordan Wright. Olivia Conway, 0 for 2 to start this game. That ends a run of 15 consecutive makes coming off of a double double against South Carolina. 21 to 10. Now this is an interesting lineup for both parties here. I mean, you've got Conway who takes advantage of his height and mismatch down low on Wright. Wright has to make that catch more difficult, can't let him get so deep. Yet on the other end, Vanderbilt can spread out this really tall lineup for Tennessee, make the big guys come out on the perimeter. Now splashes in both 
down. Tennessee back out to a double digit lead, largest lead of the game. Commodores one for seven this half. They got up to a slow start in the first half. Right for three, barely found the rim. I just think you could make him guard a little bit. When Studi was able to get the opening from three, he took Kamwa off the bounce with a little step back. Ziegler, great ball fake. Lawrence recovers to pick up Vescovy. Nearly a throw away. Ziegler. Phillips kept the dribble on his way down and a shot clock violation or a timeout. And Tennessee got the timeout before it hit zero in red. It's a Tennessee turnover and a shot clock violation. Terrific defensive possession by Vanderbilt there. They got some deflections. They forced Ziegler to go in there off balance, throw up a high floater runner off the glass. And then battled hard enough for that offensive rebound, or defensive rebound, I should say, leading the shot clock violation. You see how good the sets are, the Vanderbilt runs, and see what Orange Down would bring for Jerry Stackhouse's team here. Needing a bucket, down 10. Looking for Robbins. Into the corner. Robbins had a hand on the rebound, but couldn't contain it. They run a good set, but Tennessee, again, fights through screens so hard that they are not phased by a single screen for Vanderbilt in that half-court set. Colin Smith back on the floor to replace Jordan Wright for Vandy. Josiah Jordan James returns for Tennessee. This is what I love about the versatility of Tennessee's bench. You bring Josiah Jordan James in and he and Phillips can play the three or the four and you get a whole different type of lineup that you can create with more shooters. To the highest scoring benches in the SEC. James for three. Tennessee's bench gives him 26 points a game. Smith the freshman cut off by Ziegler. Andy's bench Scores 31 again. Smith still looking for his first bucket. What a rebound by Robbins. And he draws a foul on Adu on his way back up. Liam Robbins is having a coming out party this season for Vanderbilt, getting 13 and 6. The guy who led the Big Ten of blocks when he was at Minnesota. He went right into Adu. That's after a really tough one-handed rebound. He just battles down low. Such a huge body, 250 pounds, just muscles you. And great hands. Just smaller body than it was for Liam Robbins when he was at Assumption High School in Davenport, Iowa. He was a 300-pounder at high school. Went to Sunrise Christian Academy in Kansas because he had zero Division I offers. That turned into an offer to go back to Iowa and play at Drake. And he was a pretty good player for two years at Drake. Good enough that a guy who grew up a Big Ten fan and a fan of the Wisconsin Badgers had a chance to go play for Richard Patino, Minnesota. That lasted a year. Patino got fired, and lo and behold, he ends up at Vanderbilt, now finally healthy in his second year at Vandy. What a Another, visit. Part what a of that story was uh, following his uncle, Ed Conroy, who was on that Minnesota staff. And Ed Conroy gets picked up by Stackhouse and says, hey, guess what? My nephew's pretty good, too. I think he might join me. Yeah, I got a seven-foot nephew. Can he come down with me from the Twin Cities? And now Ed Conroy, head coach at the Citadel, he wasn't able to bring Robbins with him. Tonight. Well, he wasn't. The Conroy family has a history down there, don't they? Challenge three from the corner. And it was tip, but the officials didn't see it. Wasn't that shot blocked? Yeah, sure looked like it from here. like the ghetto boys my eyes are playing tricks on me was that part of the was that part of the rap history you guys went over with stack and shoot around today yeah, that was uh that was slightly before my time but uh i really like the reference yak 
would it be my mind? But I lost that a long time ago. Great defense by Ziegler. Here's Robbins to bail him out. And Ziegler tried to pick his pocket, but reached in. And that is the third on Zakai Ziegler. And Chippy, that's what you'd expect between these two. Guys and saying, wear them down. You have a 10 point lead, wear them down defensively. Josiah Jordan James and Euros Plavcic emphasizing the same thing to their teammates. Guys, we got to play good defense, put a couple of big stops together, and we can put this thing away down the stretch. They're certainly capable of that, but as far as the wear them down aspect of it, this is a Vanderbilt team that's deeper than most. Jerry Sackhouse plays a lot of guys just about even minutes and well that can give him some inconsistency especially on the offensive end that can give him a lot of bodies out there shot clock late Thomas beat the buzzer first bucket of the night for Trey Thomas that's a huge three for Vandy and I think this is the best three-point shooting lineup Vanderbilt has when you look at the perimeter guys for them right now and that's where they're gonna have to get some of their points Best could be open after the screen. Shooter's touch. Coach Stackhouse can only shake his head over there. Good defense, contested shot. Stackhouse has a long history with Rick Barnes as a player for Dean Smith. Based off with Barnes' first Clemson team. Three times that one season. North Carolina top five all year, won all three of those matchups that were loaded with pros, including Stack, 17,000 point score in the NBA. Rick Barnes said, I love Jerry Stackhouse as a player. He had some plays against us that caused me to look at my assistants and just say, wow, including one. He said he took it from about the tee in the Tennessee level, two steps, one dribble, and down a reverse dunk against us. Out of bounds will be Vanderbilt basketball. Going back to your point about Tennessee wanting to wear Vanderbilt down, you make a great one. Vanderbilt has depth. I don't think fatigue's going to be a factor. Tennessee is more physical. To me, it's Tennessee, you've got to get consecutive stops, keep extending this lead because I think it's the mental fatigue as well where Vanderbilt's just not built to come back from big-time double-digit deficits. Defensive pressure results in a bad entry pass. But Laurel Brown lost his footing. Ball fake, pass, another pass, right back to Josiah Jordan James. Plopchus battles, gets it, slams it in. Advantage, Uros Plopchus inside against Melora Brown. Three ball, Trey Thomas skips off. Tennessee lead, Vandy. Get the clamps, put him on the defensive end. Beskin went down hard. He's still on the ground. On the other end, five on four and a rush three. And now they'll stop with Tennessee getting possession of Beskin under the opposite basket. Did he hit his head on the floor? It certainly sounded yeah, like it, were, although I didn't see it. Pretty strong collision there. Best to be left side of the screen, number 25. Oh. And he caught an elbow from Plopchich. That trying was a big, heavy elbow. Yeah, trying to sneak in for that offensive rebound, but don't want to get in the way of that. But what a tough kid. He doesn't want to come out of this game. And he won't come out of the game. They tried to get... The freshman Julian Phillips in for him, and Vesky just kind of waved him off. Maybe Kamwa, too strong. He had the high low look to Adu. Uh, I think sometimes Kamwa gets in that awkward spot where he's shooting a jump shot about four feet away. I think he can just keep going with that shoulder, get the angle, and finish up the glass. Adu commits his third as Robbins hustled down the floor to get post position. Vandy hasn't made a bucket 243. There's Thomas off the inbounds. Vandy needed that one. 
Yeah, it's a great look. Well executed play. Escobie with the run out. And that's where it just kills you if you Vanderbilt. A five-point swing as you got an open three for one of your best three-point shooters. And oftentimes that corner miss three leads to transition buckets. Good cut by Ezra Magnon, the senior out of Antioch, California, Bay Area guy who is the Big West freshman of the year, his first year at UC Davis. Yeah, Beskin is playing with a clear head, probably out there thinking more pumper nickel than plays. Shot clock at two. Wow, beautiful. Yeah, he's really good with that. He's got a little bit of a fadeaway. That 15 footer, such a sweet, soft touch. We talk about it often that high release that Coach Barnes has taught his big man so well. Tennessee has outscored Vandy 25 to 9 this half. Magnon finds Robbins and stepped into Vescovy. Draws the foul. It's a third on Santiago Vescovy, and Bandy's big will be at the free throw line. But how about Tennessee's big? With double digit points, rebounds, and blocks. That was a squad right there. Jeff Roberson, a guy that could kind of do it all at the three or four position. And in this, during the Stackhouse era, they've been competitive with Tennessee, just unable to get over the hump, see if they don't have a final push here in the final seven minutes. Grant Williams would rebound to have a couple of really good games against Bandy, huh? Yeah, got to the free throw line quite a bit against Bryce Drew's squad down in Nashville. Robbins has 15. That's a 12-point Tennessee lead. How did the Vandy fans treat you, Dane Bradshaw, playing in his rivalry? You know, I heard a lot of chants um, across the SEC. The most unique one I ever heard probably would have been at Memor Memorial where they chanted, Dane has crabs. Du -du 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 -du. So, yeah, just your average day on the road with STDs and stuff. Where you do a second? No, oh, my favorite part was the rhythm. Dun, 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 dun. That's the only part I'm going to comment on. Tennessee leads by a dozen. Some folks, medical information should not be shared. <laughs> <laughs> Some folks sitting there are broadcast. I don't know how they got it. Location very curious. Who would leak something like that to a student? You know, I call it one of your games back in your college days. If I would have had that kind of information, would have made right. the broadcast, too. <laughs> I know you would have gone on the air with it. No, no the SEC could be fun. Get and back in. Vanderbilt has Kentucky coming to Memorial soon. They're going to need a packed house for that one. And uh, quite the question marks mm. in that game. Not so much on the Vanderbilt side. Kentucky's... Decades of excellence gives them, uh, I think, the right to be a headline in many ways because there's so many interested in what that program does. But you made a great point. Congrats to Lamont Paris. Huge win for South Carolina on the road. Did it without their star player, by the way. Here's Robbins inside. And quickly on Kentucky, the challenge, too, for them is nobody in the SEC is feeling sorry for them. When they come here to Knoxville this Saturday, it's going to be sold out. They don't care if Kentucky's down. They're going to still be every team Super Bowl and sell out. Good finish by Julian Phillips. 6'8 freshman. Doing a good job getting to the rim. You'll be at the Kentucky Tennessee game, huh? Yeah, Chris Lofton getting his jersey retired. So, what an honor that is. Right with the left handed scoop. Good move by right there on Phillips. 10 point Tennessee lead. Challenge when you try to spread out with shooters and be a little small with Studi at the four. Kamwa can rise up on him at any time. Bandy just made its last three. Well, I, I credit Stackhouse. That was a great play. They get a little crackback screen from Robbins to get a shooter open. Unable to connect. Best to be for three. Got it. 
Santiago Vescovi makes almost three threes a game. He's trying to catch up with your buddy Lofton in terms of threes made per game. That is a heady goal for Santiago Vescovi, but he is a weapon. And Tennessee has now made five straight and leads by 15. If you're guarding Vescovi, three school in Kentucky before we offered him late at Tennessee, and he did not impress early. He was slow. He did drills the wrong way. He was uncoordinated. Couldn't even do the layups the right way. And he just kept working, kept working. But once he got comfortable, and I told a reporter earlier today, they said, when did you know he was, like, legit, legit? And it was actually a blowout loss in the Maui Invitational to North Carolina, who would eventually become the national champs, where in the second half he just said, forget the upper class from everybody else, and nobody else, else wants to go hard against these guys. I will. And it didn't matter if it was Raymond Felton on him, Rashad McCants. He gave everybody buckets. And the rest is history. Made seven threes in rough against his home state team product at Amazement, Kentucky. Tennessee win on the road against the Cats. Willis Patrick picks up the miss and draws the third personal on Liam Robbins here with 429 to play. Plus it's now with I believe that's his fifth offensive rebound. And the first shot defense at times from Vanderbilt has not been bad, but Plus is just get buries. The defender down low and creates these extra rebounds opportunities and that's where his huge body he might not be the most skilled where Kamwa can be on the perimeter and the mid-range but that is where he can absolutely have a huge impact on the game hasn't been a great free throw shooter over the course of this season knocks them both down there came in at just 38 percent from the free throw line but he is a perfect three for three tonight Tennessee had a 7 nothing run over the last minute plus. Set through right. Ball came right to him, and he finishes it up. You mentioned Tennessee getting Kentucky in the building this weekend. A couple of big ones come to Memorial coming up for Bainey. They got Arkansas and Alabama coming to town. Two teams that will meet up tomorrow night in Fayetteville on ESPN2. And they're a well-coached team, well-prepared. And as Coach Stackhouse says, look, we have enough to win. He never questions the talent on his team. However, everybody knows the margin for error for them is less than other teams because there are some great, talented ball clubs in the SEC. And if they want to pull off some upsets, they got to play nearly perfect. Escobie. Got 15 after a quiet first half. Yeah, just too much room. He's curling off that screen hard, and the defender's trailing way too much. Look at Ziegler for the foul, and it's his fourth. 73 56. Story time. Late night with Dane Bradshaw continues from that. Last week, Chad Newman is a guy that has lived that himself. And to the free throw line goes Ezra Magnon. Yeah, with the DeMar Hamlin story being top of mind, Chad Newman was a hero in a similar vein with a player, Emmanuel Negadu, who was a terrific player for Tennessee. They had just finished workouts. He was sprinting on the practice field with teammate Bobby Mays, and they rushed to Chad Newman and said, hey, E-man's down. He's like, what do you mean down? He sprints out there, performs CPR, and they come out with a defilibrator and, and save Emmanuel Negadu's life. Chad Newman awarded National Trainer of the Year for saving his life. And it's one thing to train for it. It's another thing to be there in the moment, in the action. And he stepped up big time. And they tell that story in their CPR training, and he says exactly and describes the events as tough as they are to relive. It helps others be ready for the moment. We're going to count that one on a goaltending call, and we'll give the bucket to Tyron Lawrence. It's a 15-point Tennessee lead after the Julian Phillips dunk on the other end. Amazing story and powerful moment. And I think what's most amazing about it is no one will forget what happened in Cincinnati on a Monday night in, in sports history. But 
how often that happens at lower levels and when cameras aren't rolling and when it's not a nationally televised game with 20 million people watching. And it can happen anywhere. Jordan Wright with the breakaway dunk. And so thanks to the athletic trainers everywhere, not just for the hard work they do every day, but literally saving lives. And peace of mind knowing they're available if something does happen. That one turned the other way by Robbins, who has not had as big an impact on the defensive end tonight as normal. Lawrence gets through and reverses it in. They'll count it. And Tyron Lawrence will go to the free throw line. Remember, Vandy put together a 17-3 run late in the Missouri game to make it tight. And now they have a chance to cut it to 10. And Ziegler's thinking, where the heck did Robbins come from? And that leads to this transition opportunity. Lawrence loves to get to that left hand, gets the and one. But on the other end, Ziegler split right down the middle. Thought he had the easiest two of the night. And then Robbins really quick off the ground. Lawrence nets the free throw. Mandy on a 7-0 run in 39 seconds. You mentioned having multiple point guards on the floor. Key, Ziegler, Vescovy to an extent. Yep. Great Great free throw shooters. Kamba created space with Thomas, but couldn't finish. Vandy on a 7 0 run, trying to add to it. Magnon into the paint, got a ball fake. Oh, he just missed the four footer. Vanderbilt's inability to make timely baskets has really prevented them from being able to get themselves in the win column on the road and several other times this season. Vandy hasn't won a road game against a top 25 team since 2017 in Gainesville. Magnon with the foul and that'll put Sakai Ziegler at the free throw line. Ezra Magnon, thousand point score at UC Davis, fifth leading score in school history. Started every game in three years, graduated, got accepted into Vanderbilt, was on his way in, and said, oh, yeah, by the way, I can play a little bit. He's been a really strong player for Vanderbilt, knows who he is. You know, he's not a deep threat, but he doesn't try to be a player that he's not. So oftentimes, guys try to prove that they can do this or that to impress scouts. And Young just says, look, I know who I am. I'm going to try to get to the rack and be a floor general. Ziegler splashes and bolt down. He's an 80% free throw shooter on the season, 90% in SEC play. And that's another underestimated quality of all these point guards. Now you have to side Jordan James who can play that role too. But when teams are fouling late, you're not just searching for one guy to get the ball to. You got essentially 80% or better of the options on the court that can make those free throws. Robbins and James fouls him from behind. That'll put Liam Robbins back at the free throw line. Liam Robbins made a living at the free throw line in the first half. He is 9 of 10 for the charity stripe overall tonight. He was 6 for 6 at the line against Mizzou. And one more coming. 136 left in regulation here in Knoxville. Team point night, a lot better than his average. Full court pressure. Oh, Jordan James tipped away. Four seconds left on the shot clock. Late night here in Knoxville. Almost time for your late local news. You got past some... your bedtime? Yeah, it is. Uh, I've been having this, the Starbucks coffee that uh, you finally bought for once. I appreciate that. Uh -huh. You see, uh, I only did it to get the stars. <laughs> some of these substitutions.
When Tennessee won at Ole Miss, they were doing offense for defense, and Coach Barnes was really frustrated about that. He said, look, I should be able to have five guys on the court that can execute on both ends at a high level. Yeah, he told his guys, you should be embarrassed if you have to get out of, take, be taken out of the game for defensive reasons. Shot clock violation, 106 to play. Barnes is tough on his guys. He spares no rod, right? I mean, he comes right after him. If you make a mistake, he's going to hold you accountable. So he was telling us a story during the shoot around that he doesn't watch as many college basketball games as he used to because he's too busy watching game film. And he said, we had a practice one time and everybody's feeling good. And the assistant's like, man, that was a great practice. And his response was, have you seen the film? And the next day dissected the film and everybody involved in it. And all the way down, I think what surprised me was the minutia of your footwork in one particular defensive drill. Yeah, he wants these guys squared up. It's interesting that they'll mention their closeouts where you whether the opponents going left or right or if you want to play them straight up Called it a bear a bear closeout a bear hug closeout <laughs> I'd never heard that before and that, I said what does that mean? It, it says you close out with your arms out wide and play them straight up You're not forcing right a or, or left or giving them any angles so You just you kind of like you, you go to Cage Cove and you get out of the car and you see one that's bigger than you expected Put your you hands get straight get up. Big. Yeah, yeah, get yeah. big. <laughs> Want to go to Cage Cove tomorrow? <laughs> no, I'm okay. not with you. I don't trust you. You're not just getting big. <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll be at Dollywood then. Dolly's expanding a reading program in the entire state of California. Did you know that? Dollywood's the greatest. Dolly Parton, of course. And, say, and, yeah, I'm sorry. I was in my mind. I was trying to think of every ride that I loved going up there. That's better than Disney World. You know, you know the company you work for. Right? <laughs> Maybe not. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just kidding. Look, I'm just trying to get some love to East Tennessee. You know. Tennessee will wrap up its 14th win of the season. Its 25th consecutive win at home. Its 11th straight. Against Vanderbilt, seven nothing run to start the game, nine nothing run to start the second half, and never look back. Rick Barnes team not as dominating defensively in the first half, but in the second half, they hold Vandy to third.